Uh, I'm Peter Saunders. I'm not a family medicine doctor. I'm actually a general surgeon originally from New Zealand, but I have I'm a great fan of family medicine and I worked with the Christian Medical Fellowship in the UK uh, for 27 years, uh, 18 of those as CEO, and then that's the CMDA of the UK. And then for the last five years, I've been the CEO of, of the International Christian Medical and Dental Association, that's uh, ICMDA. So uh, let me just give you, I've been asked to give an overview of uh, ICMDA, what it is, to set it in context, and then to say a little bit about the, the course um, the the, the two-year diploma that we're we're offering. So I'll just uh, make my screen live and no. so uh, ICMDA uh, brings together Christian doctors and dentists from all over the world. Uh, we started in 1963 and we've grown now to 107 affiliated national movements. And our vision is a Christian witness through doctors and dentists in every community and in every nation. So it's all based on uh, Christ's Great Commission, Matthew 28 and uh, Acts 1-8, to see a Christian presence everywhere and through that to disciple people into his kingdom. Our mission is to start and to strengthen national movements of Christian doctors and dentists like CMDA US, of which I'm sure most of you are involved with. And so where they don't exist, we start them. Where they do, we seek to strengthen them. And our focus in achieving that is very much developing training and mentoring Christian medical and dental leaders. So training is a huge part of, of what we do across a variety of different platforms. Uh, ICMDA started in 1963 with <clears throat> six national movements who met at a conference in Amsterdam in the, in the Netherlands. And you can see we've grown uh, at each World Congress, welcoming new affiliated groups and to the present level of, of uh, 107. The, uh, the green countries here are those that have fully affiliated national movements with ICMDA. The orange ones, we have contact groups that we're working with moving toward affiliation. And in the blue countries, we have individual contacts. So it's growing uh, quite quite rapidly. We operate in <clears throat> seven main languages, although there are six and a half thousand languages in the world, most uh, people attending universities and studying medicine and, and uh, or dentistry will be speaking one of these seven. And of course the yellow countries are those where the predominant language is, is Spanish. We are divided for uh, uh, reasons of operation into 14 regions around the world. You can see two of those are in Latin America, the Central American region, which includes the Caribbean, and then also South America. And each of these regions has a regional secretary and a group of field workers who support them. Most of these people are tent makers in, a, in the sense that, like the Apostle Paul, they earn their, uh, their keep by doing medicine or dentistry in professional roles, but actually uh, do their ministry in their spare time. And we, we help fund their travel and expenses. So uh, this is the Central American team. Mario Ruiz, the regional secretary from Panama, is actually a family doctor, uh, as is Mario Uceda, who is the regional representative for Central America. He's based in Guatemala. Uh, Cara is in Anglophone Central America. So we bring people together for conferences. Notably, the World Congress happens every four years. The last one was in Tanzania in East Africa. We had almost a thousand people from over a hundred countries there. And uh, intermittently, we run regional conferences. So we've had about, we're, we're, we will by the end of this year have 15 regional conferences happening this year. And uh, in the last month, I've just come back from, first of all, Japan, the East Asia Conference, then uh, the Portuguese World Congress in Brazil. And I've just come back last Monday from the Francophone World Congress, which was held in Burundi in Central Africa. So uh, people are coming together for training, for support, for worship, and so on. These are our, our six values. We're biblical and missional. We uh, are into equipping 
and service. And it's really within that equipping part that the Diploma of Family Medicine fits. And we operate in unity in Christ, but across a huge diversity of different personalities, experiences, gifts and skills, and of course, languages and cultures. We have uh, nine uh, strategic priorities. I'm not going to talk about uh, any of them except for number six, which is developing our diploma courses, which is uh, relevant here. And the background to this, which you'll all know, is that if we look at the top causes of global deaths uh, in the world, uh, most people now are dying not necessarily from uh, infections or diarrheal diseases or tuberculosis, but increasingly from non-communicable diseases, uh, ischemic heart disease and stroke, chronic obstructive airways disease, and uh, various forms of cancers. And so uh, non-communicable diseases are the leading cause of death worldwide, 41 million people each year, or 71% of all global deaths uh, each year. And many of these are related to lifestyle issues or to, or to poverty. And 85% uh, of these premature deaths, uh, the premature deaths from NCDs occur in low and middle income countries where there's very little in the way of family medicine. So uh, as you know, half of the world's uh, 8 billion people still lack access to essential health services. And each year because of the cost of those services, about 100 million are pushed into poverty. And yet, 80 to 90 percent of all people's health needs across their lifetime can be covered by primary health care, a good family doctor or general practitioner. And yet most countries in the world have no postgraduate training in family medicine, none at all. So you either uh, attempt to get into a very competitive hospital specialty uh, or you go out and practice bad medicine just out of medical school with no postgraduate training. And so many of doctors in the community are acting simply as signposts uh, to refer to more experienced doctors rather than being able to resolve problems themselves. And our dream really is to equip people on the front line in countries where there is no family medicine training given to postgraduates to be able to resolve more and to refer uh, less. And so this is the background to our diploma courses. The, the, the history actually starts earlier than 2020 because it was my predecessor, Dr. Vinod Shah, working out at the um, Distance Learning Education Center in Christian Medical College for Law in India, who had the dream of offering postgraduate family medicine training to people in India where there were no uh, courses available at that time. And uh, pioneering that course, they've trained uh, several thousand people now uh, in the course. And in this partnership that we have, uh, ICMDA with Christian Medical College for Law, uh, where Rebecca works, and also the Loma Linda University in, in uh, California, uh, is it was to make this course available, to take the course that was developed in India and digitalize it and internationalize it uh, as well. And so we launched the course in the uh, after the start of the COVID pandemic. We were planning to do it anyway, but COVID didn't stop us. And it's now been running for five years altogether. So we've had 190 students from over 50 countries five annual intakes. And after running the course in this way for five years, we're now launching it in French, Spanish, and Russian in that order in 2025. So Spanish will be the second group starting in March of next year. We're currently recruiting for three academic and administrative language teams to cover these three languages. And each of these teams will produce will consist of two people, an academic lead who will be part-time and also uh, an administrative lead who will be full-time. And it's just incidental, but we are also next year launching a very similar distance learning diploma in healthcare management. And uh, that will 
<clears throat> that will start uh, in January. The course is largely written. And the vision here is that there are about 2,000 church and mission hospitals in Africa and Asia, but most of them are led by people with no formal training in healthcare management. And so we're seeking to plug that gap as well. So the Diploma of Family Medicine, which started in India uh, with uh, 15 300-page textbooks and a distance learning program, uh, has now been digitalized in English and now into French, Spanish, and Russian starting from next year. So you can see uh, here, it's a two-year blended course uh, with uh, 100 subjects over 15 modules altogether. And altogether now we've had 190 odd students from over 50 countries. And you can see the cohort numbers there. The first three groups have largely graduated. There are still some to finish because of the practical requirement or the final exam not passed. But, and, and the, the fourth and fifth cohorts are well underway. You can see the picture of our, our first uh, batch of 2020, the, the 25 students who graduated from that course. And on the map here, you can see the six centers where they go for their practical skills contact sessions. So uh, the idea was rather than taking people from the front line where they're working to uh, undergo expensive training in an institution and then to go back to the front line, our vision was to take the education to them. Uh, so that they were learning alongside their, their work. And the aim was to train and to certify doctors with postgraduate training in family medicine in the developing world and equip them professionally and as indeed spiritually as well uh, with a whole person approach to serve the country and serve uh, the poor uh, in their country as well. Now, the word we use here is certify rather than accredit, and that's because uh, this, these, this course is aimed largely at, at improving people's capacity who are already working on the front line. But we don't give, uh, we can't guarantee national accreditation, although some students who've gone through this course have been accredited by their national medical associations after having finished, finished it. Uh, just back from uh, Francophone Africa, as I say, and that's certainly what's happened in Burkina Faso in Francophone West Africa, where the course has been recognized and the doctors are credited. So it's a course over two years. There are five components. There are self-learning modules that you do online in your own time. There is tailored skills training, which is both online for consultations, but also in, uh, in a mission hospital to learn practical skills. Uh, the face to, those are the face-to-face -face contact sessions, video conferencing, and about 30 hours of pre-recorded video lectures uh, altogether. So across the 15 major modules, there are 100 self-learning modules, each on a different subject. And as I say, this course started as 15 300-page manuals. So uh, it's all been digitalized now and interactive. Video lectures uh, of consultations in particular, two contact programs each a week long, which are now run end to, to end for uh, learning the skills that you can't learn online. So particularly clinical examination and uh, investigation skills, 100 assignments throughout the course, project work and an elective residency program for a tailored skills training. So these are the core components. There's uh, the main thing is the self learning modules, which are asynchronous because you do, can do them entirely in your own time and pick them up or leave them whenever you like. The, the formative and summative assessments that are uh, based on those, the contact programs in a mission hospital, and then providing support throughout, particularly with monthly online sessions with trained tutors who've either been through the course themselves before or who are experienced family medicine doctors. And you can see a little bit here what the course looks like online. Uh, the, the aim, as I said, is to refer less and resolve more, but it's a problem-based approach that starts with uh, symptoms or uh, syndromes 
and, and works people through to the differential diagnosis and, and treatment. So it's very practically organized. And uh, for example, this, this page, which is looking at the, uh, the issue of delirium, it shows you the, the uh, steps along the way here, which you can see graphically here, trigger questions, then introduction, some data from India, and then you work through the pathophysiology differential diagnoses, morbidity, mortality, and so on. So it's a, a journey from uh, the beginning, the, the, the symptom or uh, constellation of symptoms through to uh, uh, with each disease. So <clears throat> here we have some pictures of the contact programs. As I said, these are running in, in six locations at the moment in English. In fact, they're just finishing at this time because we run them this time of year. And we've had contact programs this year in Nigeria, Uganda, Egypt, uh, India, in CMC Valor, and in Cambodia. And the plan is that as we go forward, we will have uh, contact programs in uh, for each language uh, set. And so we've we've identified uh, two two centres in Central Asia, in Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan, to to run the Russian language programs. In, uh, in French, they're going to be in Togo and in Democratic Republic of Congo. And uh, in, in the, for the Spanish one, we're, we're looking at a Honduras lo location. How much does it cost? It's $4,000 per year for the course, which is a lot cheaper than equivalent courses, but it's still beyond a lot of students. And so we offer scholarships of either 25, 50, 75, or 90 percent. They're all means tested on the basis of the doctor's salary. So for example, if you're earning under $500 per month US equivalent, then you'll be qualified for a 90 percent scholarship. If you're earning more than $2,000 per month, then you'll be expected to pay the full, uh, the full course. But we can uh, match patients' means by staggering those payments over time. And uh, many of the institutions in their work will help to, or, or mission societies will help to support them. So this just gives you the geographical uh, spread of um, the, the different groups. The darker the color, the more students. So you can see that it's Cambodia and Nigeria where the biggest numbers have come from, but there's a huge uh, variety of different countries but uh, right across the board. And then uh, the roles. So as I've said, in the middle, the green Christian Medical College for Law are the ones who develop the course, who deliver the course, who oversee all the academic side of it, and who were responsible for making it all digital. Uh, Loma Linda University provide accreditation, or more accurately, certification for the course. So they, uh, they um, examine it, look through it, make uh, give advice, uh, and so on. And then what ICMDA does is that we, we provide uh, an administrative backup for registration and payment of fees. We also raise money for scholarships. We help to recruit the course through our national movements. And in fact, most of the people, but not all who've done the course, are members of one of ICMDA's national movements in uh, resource poor countries. And we're also responsible for contact center planning so that <clears throat> when they do their hands-on training, we send a team usually of two doctors out there and ICMDA looks after the administration of, of that. So it's very much a partnership where uh, all three groups working together have been able to do something that, that neither of us or none of us would have been able to do as effectively or possibly at all alone. So I hope that uh, gives you a good overview of, um, of what ICMDA is, why this course is so important to us, uh, as it really fits into our, our, our aims and strategy and values and, and our aim to equip, particularly Christian doctors work on the front line to practice compassionate Christ-like medicine in a highly professional way. And then uh, a little bit about how the course runs and fits together.